Saddle up, partner. This is going to be a doozy. Cliff Kingsbury and Steve Keim get extensions. I will try not to scream. Uh, what is the AOC South's team that needs to change their quarterback or maybe not this offseason going to do? We'll get into it. And is there ever a world that we could live in where a rookie scale quarterback contract doesn't exist? Alex Clancy, Tyler Rowland, all that more on today's Thursday episode of Locked On NFL. Let's go! You are Locked On NFL. Your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team, every day. Welcome in to a Thursday edition of Locked on NFL. He is Tyler Rowland from Locked on Titans at Tic Tac Titans on Twitter. I'm Alex Clancy from Locked on Cardinals at Clancy's Corner on Twitter. Thank you for making Locked on NFL your first listen each and every day, free and available on all platforms. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Subscribe to Locked on Titans. Subscribe to Locked on Cardinals on our respective YouTube channels. We've got a damn barn burner today, man. Um, oh, yeah. So, Tyler... <laughs> Tyler and I message, you know, and, and we talk about the show and everything. And pretty much what he said in our group DMs is I'm going to mute my mic and let Alex take over with the first segment. Now, yes. I want Tyler's thought process on this before I give mine, because an outsider's perspective, from a national perspective, from an AFC perspective, from an opponent that the Cardinals punished last year and the teams had very different trajectories, you know, after the halfway point of the season, he's got some insight. And then I'll give my thoughts on Steve Kime and Cliff Kingsbury getting respective five-year extensions through the year 2027 amid all of the pseudo turmoil from social media, et cetera, about Kyler Murray not getting a deal yet. Right. Well, Carson, number went. one. Oh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to give, give my little statement it, here uh, about the Cardinals. So Kime, Steve Kime, I kind of understand that. I mean, he's had some bad moments. He's done some things that don't line up, but I mean, he went out and he got DeAndre Hopkins. That was the right move. He was able to get Chandler Jones. He was able to get uh, J.J. Watt. I think those were the right moves. Drafting Byron Murphy, drafting the two inside linebackers, uh, Collins and Simmons. I think those have panned out pretty well. Uh, you look on the offensive side, he was able to trade for Zach Ertz, which that certainly helped the Cardinals late in the season. And you got to be honest here, getting away from Josh Rosen one year after you picked him in the first round, that takes some cojones to do that. But it was the right move, despite all the turmoil with Kyler Murray right now in the drama. Kyler Murray is a far better player than Josh Rosen. So, Kime has made a lot of the right decisions. But it's Kingsbury, who I have a little bit of a beef with, giving him an extension out of nowhere. I get that this is the first playoff appearance for the Cardinals since 2015, and the owner uh, is Michael Bidwell, correct? I, I have a feeling that, that he's probably like, oh, I can't get rid of this guy. He's finally got me back to the playoffs. But you look at Cliff Kingsbury going all the way back to 2013. Started 7 and 0, finished 1 and 5. 2014, started 3 and 4, finished 1 and 4. 2015, started 5 and 2, finished 2 and 4. 16, started 3 and 4, finished 2 and 3. 17, started 4 and 3, finished 2 and 4. 2018, started 5 and 2, finished 0 and 5, and that's all at Texas Tech. Then he comes to the Cardinals, starts 3-3 three, three and 1, finishes 2 and 7, starts 5 and 2 in 2020, finishes 3 and 6. Last year starts 7 and 0, finishes 3 and 5. The guy can't get it done after people get tape on what he's doing early in the season. He doesn't adjust, he doesn't have his team ready to play. That playoff game was embarrassing. There's one way obviously I cover the Titans. The Titans lose that game committing a bunch of turnovers, but generally speaking, most of the team played well and they looked like they were ready to go. The Cardinals were not ready to go at all. They had no answers. They didn't look prepared. And I think that's that's on Cliff Kingsbury either. He struggles to scout himself and adjust, or he struggles to learn what other defenses are doing throughout the year and adjust to that. He's like a guy who comes out with a great opening script, and then once the defense adjusts to him, He's lost in the sauce and doesn't know what to do next. So I don't see how you look at that. You look at how they finished the last three years and say just because that guy limped to a playoff berth that he deserves a contract. I'm not saying fire him like some people say. I'm not saying fire the guy, but a contract extension for that many years after that, I don't see how Cliff Kingsbury deserves that. I'm going to send you the biggest red velvet cake I could find. <laughs> 
and I don't, I don't need to expound upon what you said because everything you said is right. Um, except for one thing, Cliff Kingsbury should be fired. Um, here, here's, fair, fair. He, here's, here's where I am. Okay. Um, starting with Steve Kime, Steve Kime has given one player that he's drafted in the first round in extension since 2013. One player. One player has gotten a second contract that he's drafted. Okay. Number one. Number two, sure. Offseason, DeAndre Hopkins, great. That was more owner to owner. That was more McNair and Bidwell because they were buddies. They wanted to get they wanted to get DeAndre Hopkins to a safe spot away from Bill O'Brien. Nothing mm-hmm. to do with Steve Kime. Steve Kime, Zach Ertz, great. Marcus Golden for a six round pick. Awesome. Like Byron Murphy, Ross, good pick. Yeah, Byron Murphy, but he's not a CB1, and we saw that. Okay. Second, sure. that was the second round. So he's had some. I mean, he traded up to draft Buda Baker. That's probably the best draft pick that he's yeah, made yep. in, in his time here. What we are just overlooking is Steve Keim is like a procrastinating student. Steve Keim doesn't do well in the draft. He has to save his ass as the test, you know, test day becomes, you know, he ends up studying for 48 hours straight and getting a C minus on his test. That's, That's Steve Keim. And the leadership is there's a black hole in leadership from the GM position. I'm just going to take you back before I jump to Cliff Kingsbury. In 2016, after the Cardinals got lambasted in the NFC Championship game against Cam Newton, 2016, week one, late night game, Monday night football against Jimmy Garoppolo when, when Tim, Tom Brady was suspended for the first four games because of deflate gate. Chandler Zero misses a field goal at the end of the game. Bruce Arians was quoted as saying, the team didn't recover after that week one loss. That's leadership. Yeah, that's yeah. You can't that's Steve steady Kime. the ship after a week one loss. What the heck? So with Cliff Kingsbury, Cliff Kingsbury should not be an NFL head coach. He just shouldn't. Um, he, I mean, he he shouldn't. He, look at all look at the records forever before he got hired. Sure, they went mm-hmm. three to five to eight to eleven. Okay, absolutely. Yeah. You cannot give anybody credit from jumping from three to five because they don't have the same roster. They didn't have Josh Rose. They had Kyler Murray. Cardinals probably should have right. won seven games. In 2019, they should have made Mm -hmm. the playoffs in 2020, and they should have at least clinched their own playoff spot in 2021. I mean, start with small potatoes here. Starting 10 and 2, you can't clinch your own playoff spot. Daddy Sean McVay has to do it for you. Okay? Yeah. The the whole void in leadership from the head coach and the GM is the reason why the extension isn't great. Kyler Murray is not elevated by by Cliff Kingsbury. He wins in spite of Cliff Kingsbury. Cliff Kingsbury does a great job from time to time calling the correct plays. I say this every time for the Entourage fans out there. You can sell a great trailer like they did in Entourage for Medellin if the movie, and even if the movie's terrible. Steve <laughs> Cliff Kingsbury is a great trailer director. There are right. peaks that are like, man, this dude belongs here as a play caller and as a head coach. And you watch the movie and the movie's terrible. Like right. that's, that, that's Consistency. pretty much what we've, expect, what we've come to expect here. So all mm-hmm. in all, I think it's a mistake. It's not surprising and if they if they go seven and ten next year and they fire yeah. Cliff Kingsbury before the extension happens, which they won't, this is just definition of insanity is the Arizona Cardinals doing the same thing, expecting different results. Right. They can't elevate the players that they have. And it's obvious that Cliff Kingsbury, at least in national media, look at what you said. You said the definition of what I've you've paraphrased everything that I've said since week one in Tennessee this year, when they were beating up on Tennessee, same, same problems as last year, false start penalties, bad penalties inside the five yard line, settling for field goals, bad play calling around the goal line. It's the same stuff. And you can be, you you can see the glitz and the glamor of starting seven and oh and going 10 and two. It was fool's gold and everybody saw it. So and the craziest part about it is, the craziest part about it is you're in a contract dispute with Kyler Murray and you're saying that the coach is unreliable and shouldn't have got the extension. Not only is it a bad move to give the coach an extension from that perspective, but you're also, in a way, taking a shot at your quarterback. Like, hey, we're extending the coach and the GM, not you right now. So they're like giving the ownership is given more credit to the GM and the coach than he is the quarterback that's been saving his behind throughout the last few years. Yeah. That's it's TBD, but it could lend that way. Uh, especially because that's the Arizona the Cardinals optics are. Yeah, you know? for sure. And and the Cardinals don't do anything in uh, across social media. They're very old school like that. It's funny how the Cardinals won't change their ways, but they're changing, but their ways 
are losing ways, yet they refuse to change. Alex Clancy, Tyler Rowland, Locked on NFL Thursday. Follow him at Tic Tac Titans. Check him out, Locked on Titans, uh, on YouTube and anywhere you find your podcasts. Me at Clancy's Corner. I do the Cardinal stuff. They're keeping me around, which is pretty cool. Follow us on um, YouTube as well, Locked on Cardinals. Coming up next, a different quarterback situation, but one that could prove to be very important for a division that Tyler Rowland knows very well. We'll talk about that coming up next when Tyler takes the reins first. Football might be over, but basketball's in full steam for both pro and college. March Madness is like two weeks away from all the latest odds, totals, players, performance props to where the next fired coach is going to land. BetOnline.net is the number one spot for all your sports betting needs. BetOnline remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball, man. BetOnline.net is your source for hockey, boxing, and UFC odds. Not baseball. Yeah, ain't ain't going to be baseball. Head to the website, use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online, where the game starts, except for a league that's commissioned by Rob Manfred. All right, NFL fans, let's continue this Thursday Woo! edition of the Locked On NFL Podcast. Of course, uh, in our uh, little advertisement there referencing the uh, Major League Baseball lockout, how despicable, how gross, no wonder baseball is dying, sadness all the way around. But this is a football show, and football is a 12-month uh, sport, quite frankly. It's year-round at this point, especially since they moved back uh, the, the season a week with the extra game, it just feels like it never stops going. And one of the big stories that has been talked about in this 12 month sport is what the Indianapolis Colts are going to do at quarterback. We are going to talk about that, not only from the Colts perspective, but from the NFL perspective with Carson Wentz. So Colts general manager, Chris Ballard spoke recently. Uh, he was very noncommittal on Carson Wentz, uh, almost to the point of, of cold. When talking about him, there's uh, no secret is being whispered. The secrets are being yelled out loud. The Colts want to dump Carson Wentz, not only for his erratic play on the field, but not really uh, rubbing people the right way behind the scenes as well, which is something we heard about Wentz in Philadelphia. He wasn't really respected as a good teammate, didn't necessarily get along with coaches all the time, and I think that's rearing its ugly head. It's just crazy to me that Indianapolis, at, late in the season after they beat the Arizona Cardinals, I mean, it was a coronation. Jonathan Taylor's the MVP. The Colts are the hottest team in the NFL. They're the team you don't want to play, blah, 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 blah. There may be the sound of slight resentment in my voice. I'm not going to hide from that. I can't stand the Colts and that organization, but I think they get so much media love for no reason whatsoever. Chris Ballard's made some good picks, but he's near 500 in his career as a general manager. Frank Wright completely blew it in that last game of the year against the Colts or against the Jags. But of course, no blame for Chris Ballard. No blame. For Frank Wright, don't worry there. They're still great. But it's all on Carson Wentz now. So, the question then becomes, who the heck wants Carson Wentz and who the heck is going to be there for the Colts? So, what I wanted to do is talk about what's going on at the Combine. We heard from head coach Bruce Arians from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on Tuesday that he even said, Not a lot of veteran quarterbacks are going to be traded this offseason, despite all the fever pitch that we get into in the media about trades and what should happen. People expect the NFL to become the NBA at some point, and it's just not going to happen. Trades don't happen like that in the NFL in that sort of fashion. So, Bruce Arians' comment, not a lot of veterans going to be traded. We got comments on Wednesday from uh, Pete Carroll. They're not getting rid of Russell Wilson. Aaron Rodgers is in the middle of negotiations. They brought back his old quarterback coach. They're bringing back Devontae Adams. Aaron Rodgers is not getting traded. So, no Aaron Rodgers trade. No uh, Russell Wilson trade. Jimmy Garoppolo just had a major shoulder surgery that's going to keep him out for 16 weeks. That could keep some teams from maybe trading. 
Pittsburgh doesn't look like they're going to go out and trade for a quarterback. They're talking about Mason Rudolph in the draft. Uh, Kirk Cousins in Minnesota. Minnesota has committed to Kirk Cousins directly in the past few days. And Derek Carr got a major vote of confidence from new head coach Josh McDaniels to be the quarterback in Las Vegas to the point where he said he'll be our starter in week one. So, yeah, you could take all that as smoke screen and it's that time of year, but it does not look like there are going to be a lot of quarterbacks traded. And if that is the case, then who the heck are the Colts going to get? So I am going to propose this question to you, Alex, and take my bias out of it. Out of the quarterbacks I'm going to name that will be available in free agency or be available via trade, who do you think would actually make the Colts better than what they were last year? The list. They could trade for Jimmy Garoppolo. Once his shoulder's healed, maybe they'll take the risk. Who knows? Jameis Winston. Looked pretty good before tearing his ACL and looks to be pretty healthy. Andy Dalton continues to scrape and claw for a starting opportunity in the NFL. Teddy Bridgewater, maybe, on his way out in Denver. What about Jacoby Brissett returning a familiar face? So, are there any names in here that I just mentioned or any names that are maybe in your mind that would actually make the Colts better than last year? Because the one thing I want to say is, I watch the Colts all the time to cover them for my team. The Colts weren't bad last year. They weren't. They played very good football. But Wentz is just inconsistent. So which of these guys would actually improve Indianapolis? No, uh, none. Right? Like, I would keep Carson Wentz. I, I don't see there's a better option there. Than yeah, you trade well, for Jimmy Garoppolo, maybe. No, That's the only one that makes sense. Well, see, the thing is, like, and, and agreed, I mean, that list, like, Andy Dalton's the one that kind of popped out to me. I'm like, he can run that system with Jonathan Taylor. What they need to right, do right. is remove the Arian fosterness of that offense if they want to keep Jonathan Taylor healthy. They need the amount of the amount of right. tread that is on Wisconsin running back tires when mm-hmm. they come into the league. People say Alabama. Ask Ron Wisconsin. Dane and Monty Ball and Melvin Gordon and yeah. you know, like all these guys, like Jonathan Taylor, he has so much tread. He's touching the ball 30 times a game. And the fact that he's become great at catching the ball of the backfield, that's mm-hmm. fine. But that yeah. needs to be a great secondary player. weapon and not your first right. one-two option. Now, mm-hmm. say what you want about Carson Wentz. He's 6'5", 230. He played... Mm-hmm. Through most of injuries last year, even though he sprained his ankle yeah. on both games, but you know, in, in sprained both game. his ankles one yeah. game, and he threw an interception inside the one yard line. Very difficult to do a pick six. Okay, very difficult. I was to there do. I was in the Kyler building Murray, live. Kyler Murray did it the other way. So, I mean, what what am I supposed to say? The team that I cover now, the team, the players that you mentioned, the teams that you mentioned, or the quarterbacks you mentioned. Sorry, I don't think it matters until they bolster the wide receiving core. Like I know yeah. that they have Mo Ali Cox. I know Jack Doyle's fine. He's I know a free they agent, move. actually. Mo Ali Mo Cox. Ali Cox he's going to get paid. Yeah. He's not going to be in your Indianapolis Colt. T.Y. Hilton's Probably been not. out eight eight games a year for the last three mm-hmm. years. It seems like if he's healthy, he's a great wide receiver. Wide receiver three still. Paris Campbell hasn't made it to where people think Can't stay you know, that he thought he was going to go. And Michael Pittman is a bona fide wide receiver one. He's good. but but he's that second tier. He's just below. Yes. Like a, he's like in a Deontay Johnson kind of area. Yes. Where he's a wide receiver one, he's a target monster, but he needs a Chase Claypool. He needs help. And they don't yeah. have help outside of Jonathan Taylor. So if they can draft a running, if they they don't have a first round pick, that's another reason why I would keep uh, uh, Carson Wentz. Oh, so you so traded rough. him for a first round pick and he's playing 17 weeks. That's Chris it. Chris Ballard. Chris Ballard. God. Yeah. Give but, me a break. But there are a couple things that the Colts have going well for them and has nothing to do with Carson Wentz. That defense is fierce. When the defense yeah. is healthy, Darius Leonard's a top-five linebacker in the league. They have one of the best front sevens. The best. Their, their cornerback room is getting better and better by the year. because But they, they just lost well. their defensive coordinator, Matt Eberflus, yeah. to be the head coach in Chicago. I think right. that is a big deal. The next, the next side of this is Carson Wentz. And quickly, I'll just throw out a list of teams. Where yeah. do you think Wentz would fit best if he left Indy? Pittsburgh, Denver, New Orleans, Washington, Tampa Bay, or Carolina? Denver. Denver. Yeah. Yeah. Because he can play in the cold. He's got a cannon. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they are they need more of an air attack. And they've got stupid receivers. Like, they have stu- right. They have the Denver Broncos receivers before, before Patrick, before Peyton Manning went there. Now, mm-hmm. there's one. And, you know, Pittsburgh, would I think, would be good, too. But I think he'd get eaten alive in Pittsburgh. And it's not his, By the like, media. he yeah. may be a D. He may be, okay? 
but it was as much Doug Peterson as it was him in Philly. Now, one of the best fits would be Philadelphia. Like, I don't, I don't like thinking, and it's not going to happen because they're all no, Jalen Hurts. No. I don't understand. Right. He would be perfect for that offense. And I just mm-hmm. don't, that's what I don't really understand about it. But if I'm Indy, if Denver offers you, like if Aaron Rodgers is staying, like you mentioned, he's going to stay. I know we're going long, sorry. Like, I think Denver would be a great pick. Second round pick for Carson Wentz. Yep. Get something back from that first, at least get something back there. Yeah, I'm with you. And yeah, we're, we're going a little long, but this is a great conversation. It's one of the biggest stories of the all season. He's one of the only quarterbacks that I really think could be on the move and they seem desperate to get him out of there, but I don't see a lot of options for Indy and it makes things quite complicated. So he may end up getting released and then he'll have his option to go somewhere else, but we're going to move forward. We are going to talk about a, a contract quirk with rookie extensions that uh, Alex brought up that I think is very, very interesting. I have some interesting things to say about it. So we will get into that in just a moment. Wrapping up here, another Thursday edition of Locked On NFL. Thank you for making Locked On NFL your first listen each and every day, free and available on all platforms. This is fun. It was fun. Like Tyler, Tyler and I are so different. Little inside, inside the actor studio here. Tyler is regimented with taking notes and having Meticulous. points and wanting to know <laughs> what we're going to talk about six hours before the pod. Six hours is not fair. Like three yes. hours before the podcast. He's like, normally he comes up with one. I come up with one. And then I come up with a fun one in the third segment. I normally don't tell him about it until five minutes before we, we <laughs> record. So it's because I, I like to go more, you know, you know, off the hip. And this is the thing that, I've been thought thought about talked about in our podcast a little bit on the Cardinals podcast. If Kyler Murray gets an extension tomorrow, just hypothetically speaking, like say they rip up the rule book and they give him the extension. Pro Football Focus said six year, two hundred seventy five mil was the target. Who knows if that's going to be the case? Whatever, it's going to be sticker shock regardless. Yeah, it lends the question out where how many years ago ten that you could give whatever you wanted to a quarterback before he played it down. Yeah, the same. Matt Bradford, Stafford. Matt Stafford. Yeah, yeah, Matt Ryan got forty mil. Stafford and mm-hmm. Dar- Stafford and Bradford. And obviously, they they went to the rookie scale contract. And my question is: it, Is there going to be a world where the salary cap is going to be so high due to inflation that ten years from now we're going to get to a, a a life where a rookie scale contract won't exist and coaches or and front offices can pay players whatever they want because it's their salary cap and use at their disposal like is there a time where that could be possible where it's like you know what we're gonna pay you right away because we've seen enough like deshaun watson when he was in college i would have given him 30 million dollars a year right away yeah, right it's like away. you know what's gonna happen and unfortunately mm-hmm. towards acl is rookie year but like you know when guys are ready and deshaun watson was one of the last quarterbacks to come out of college where it's like he's ready he's ready to start right now let's give him 25 mil a year and there's no restructuring. There's none of that. It's like, you know what? Bingo, bango, bungo. Do you think that there is a world in, that we will live in soon at some point where that's going to be the case? Well, I have a couple of things. Number one, I have something of why it does make sense and why it may be possible and it may be coming. I have a few things that make it more realistic for a way that the NFL could implement it. And then I have a major reason of why I don't think that it could happen. So first, why I think it could potentially happen is because of NIL. The name, image, oh. likeness rules in college. These guys are getting paid. They're getting offered contracts early on. And That's it may come to a point where these college players say, hey, you know, if I can make as much money as I want while I'm in college, why do I have to take the money that your rules allow for me in the NFL? No, if you want me to come play in the NFL, I'll stay in college and make my $10, 15000000 million NIL deal then or whatever you know let's say the NIL deal for a year for the big t- a big time college player is more than their rookie salary is going to be they might say nah i'm going to stay in college as long as i want cuz i'm getting paid more than what you'll pay me as a rookie maybe that is something that could cause the NFL to say hey man we want we want these good star players to come to the NFL as soon as possible so we need to find a way to pay them sooner so that it makes more sense for them. If those NIL deals do get more and more lucrative, which five, ten years from now, who knows how lucrative they are. So I think that could force the NFL's hand to try to pick some of these guys out of college and get them to leave college earlier to make the money work. 
Now, I will say, from there, one thing that I think could make this more realistic is an all-pro qualifier or their extension eligible after two seasons instead of three. Or let's say you make the all-pro your rookie season. You come in, you're the best quarterback in the league, you make all-pro. Boom. That checks a box. You can get your extension now. Creed I Humphrey, think that Tristan be- Wirfs, not necessarily yes. just quarterbacks. Jack Conklin as a right yep. tackle for the Titans in 2016, although that was incredibly aided by uh, chipping tight ends and helping backs. And then, you know, but that's besides the point. If you make an all pro team in your first couple of, in your rookie contract, in your first, second year, you should be extension eligible the next all season because by making an all pro team, the, the reason the NFL did this is because they didn't want to be stuck paying a bunch of players who didn't deserve it, giving them more money based off their college stuff. It was too risky. Well, if the guy makes an all pro team in the NFL, it's no longer risky and he deserves to get an extension right away. These guys only have so many years in the NFL. And if you play at that high of a level on your rookie contract, you should get your extension right away. So maybe, maybe a rule like that. That if you make the all pro, your extension eligible right away. Something like that could could make this more possible and help kind of bridge the gap from what it was before to what it is now. Because I agree with you, eventually it's gonna be there's gonna be a quarterback who says, I don't want this rookie scale deal. I'm better than that. And if they actually prove it on the field, I think it would be hard to tell them no. For sure. No, that's that's really that might be my most favorite thing that you said since we've started doing this together. Very eloquently said. I mean, because it, it makes sense. Like it totally yeah. makes sense. It's um because people are getting paid, it's not going to be all Spencer Rattler money. It's not because we don't know how much like these guys are really getting paid. I mean, right. eight-year-olds on YouTube are getting paid millions of dollars a year. Okay, so crazier things. We're living in a different world now. So the thing is, though, the college football will, will never be the NFL. So, you know, like with that, it's like, well, you know, but that because that red tape is now snipped and mm-hmm. you can have a little bit more, it's not necessarily tampering, but if you're going to retract the rookie scale contract in some capacity, you're going to be able to chat like, Hey, we're going to take you number one overall. I'm like, no, you're not. If you're not paying me this, like that See, that's the issue. Too much. But yeah. Draft holdouts. I mean, if they open it up like that and team who's picking number three says we're That'd paying so you 50 fun. million a year and team picking number one says we can only pay you 30 million a year. And the quarterback says, pulls in Eli Manning and says, well, I'm not playing for you. I'm only going to play for them. If you draft me, I won't show up. Blah 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 blah. The, the NFL, the NFL won't like that. So that is one of the one of the things that makes me think they won't do that is because that that could potentially be a thing going. Well, forward. well, I'll tell you what, it adds like how much fun. Like, shut up. How much fun would that be? <laughs> like, <laughs> I know, I know, I'm the fun police. I get yeah, it. No, I know it's it's fine. Like, but if you want true parody in the NFL, if you want true whoever will give me like, but that like there are things where it's like. You know, there should be a draft lottery in the NFL and all this stuff. Like, nobody tanks in the NFL, but it's no, like, can't. if they can figure out an elixir, whoever can figure out an elixir should be the next commissioner. I think that should be the, that should be like the prize. Like, if you can figure out where you let them know, like, you know, let them know what their first year contract's going to be, but you don't let them know the extent or, you know, whatever. Like, I know we're getting into silly, silly, silly fun stuff here, but like, it'd be awesome. And I think it's feasible especially because a lot of these players, top tier players are already going to get paid, as you mentioned. Mm-hmm. So it's like, if Cleveland said, listen, I'll give you $60 million your first year. Like, we'll trade up. Like, it, the restrictor plate would be off completely at that point. As but, long as they keep the salary cap in that scenario. Yeah. Because if there's no salary cap, well, now you get into a New York Yankee situation where you're just, oh, for you know, sure. one team's outbidding everything. As long as they keep the salary cap, yeah. if you're willing to devote, 52% of your salary cap to one guy. Well, by all means, go get it. Yeah, it's you like an auction I mean? fantasy football draft. Fair. Yeah, it's like an auction yeah, fantasy I think football that draft. That would be fair. Yeah. yeah. So, but we'll see. Anyways, I mean, it's, it's, it's weird, but with the parody, I, I don't see why that, that wouldn't be possible because you're going to hurt yourself in other parts of your roster. So right. just open up that salary cap and letting that be involved in the draft. I think that could be something that potentially comes down the line, like I said, because like you said, the red tape is snipped. NIL deals are here and players from college are going to have more and more money and be willing to hold out to get what they deserve. And this could potentially be something that pops up down the line. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it, it, it's, yeah. I mean, you said it right. I mean, it's, and, and we'll, we'll leave you with that. I mean, it's just, I don't know. It's why, why it's so arbitrary. The NFL just makes up rules. You know, like, nope, we're snipping it because the offensive linemen who played in the NFL for 10 years already haven't made a 10th 
of what Matthew Stafford got before he played it down. Like, I understand the reasoning behind it going into a rookie scale contract. I think right. the players are more ready to play right away. Like, there aren't mm-hmm. that many busts nowadays who get drafted right. in the top five that are quarterbacks. Right. Like, you see promise with guys. And I feel like you're going to pay them, and there's going to be an out after the second year. Like, they'll make it team-friendly, but I don't know. It'll be fun. Alex Clancy locked on Cardinals. Tyler Rowland at Tic Tac Titans locked on Titans. We make up locked on NFL Thursday. Man, we went long. I need another throat lozenge. Um, we'll talk to you next week. <laughs> Fisherman's friend, buddy. <laughs>